Hello, Glimmer Ghouls, and welcome back. Can you hear the birds in my fireplace? What would you like to say to the people? Makes sense. If you are new here, my name is Midge Munster, and on this channel, we do all things campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. I have had the big sad for a couple of weeks now, capital D depression. But yesterday I went with my friends and did a little serotonin shopping and I bought one of the coolest and maybe like most insane things I have ever purchased. <laughs> I posted about it on Instagram yesterday and a lot of you had already kind of guessed where this was going, but it's a coffin. <laughs> Unused, of course. But this is from the late 1890s or early 1900s. I've had my eye on it for quite some time. A gal at my local antique market had this in her booth and I fell in love with it the minute that I saw it because it's just so beautiful. It's solid wood. The finish on it is gorgeous. The top is a separate piece. So it is like just open on the inside, but I couldn't really justify buying something like this just to have it sitting around in my house, but I could justify buying it if it was a furniture piece. So what we're going to do today is turn this Victorian child's coffin into my new coffee table or my coffin table, as it were. I had the idea to do a few things and attach some legs to it to just make it a bit more functional as a furniture piece. And I think it's going to be really cool and like the ultimate conversation piece in my living room. So let me grab some supplies and we are going to get started on this. Okay, so here is the bottom without the lid. Uh, it's in just like beautiful condition. It has one small chip up here, um, kind of out of that side. You can see it a little bit, but other than that, like this is, it couldn't be in any better shape. But as you can see, the wood that it's made out of is pretty thick. So I think we can attach legs to the bottom without damaging the coffin itself too much. Because I like my spooky with a side of mid-century, I knew I wanted to do hairpin legs on this. And I found these really simple ones for $10 a pop at Lowe's. I ended up getting four of them. Now I'm not sure, obviously this tapers pretty heavily. So I'm trying to decide if we do two on the thick end and just one kind of angled at the bottom and if that's going to be stable or if I should bring the legs in a little bit further and have four and the end just kind of hanging off. I'm not positive, but we're going to try a few things and find out. I also don't know if this is going to work for certain or not, but I did get a couple different types of hinges to try to possibly attach the top in a way where it will flip open. It just seems like a waste to not use this for the storage that it is. So we're gonna take a look at that as well. But I think first things first, we're going to look at attaching the legs because I need to be able to flip this upside down for that. And I don't wanna do that once the door is attached. It's so interesting, this has a 36 on the bottom of it that's been like kind of engraved into it. I have no idea if that has significance or what that means. If that's something you know anything about, let me know. Okay, so I think we're gonna do one here and one here. Maybe down a little further so that they're further apart. So we could either do The other two, yeah, two won't fit there. We'd have to come up here to fit two. So we could either do two more here or could do one down here, which I think might be the play. Okay, I think we're gonna do that. That to me looks like the best option. So I'm gonna attach these and we'll flip it over and see how it looks. I've had a few people ask me how I was certain that this coffin was never used. And <laughs> I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk a little bit about the history of these types of coffins. 
Basically these holes that you're seeing on the side here would be for a coffin pin or nail to close them and because these holes are undamaged you know that they have never been sealed. There's also no lining in this piece or even a suggestion there ever was a lining installed, no tack holes or remnants of fabric, so it's highly unlikely a body ever would have been put in this piece without a lining inside. Grieving and burial were such a huge deal during the Victorian era that a lot of families would put funds towards this even before anything had occurred, but the death rate was so high that they wanted to be prepared for these situations, especially with children. So it's very possible that a family procured this piece and never needed it, or it could have possibly been a piece used by a funeral parlor to show an example of what this type of coffin would look like. But overall, I think it's pretty safe to say that there was never a body inside of this coffin. <laughs> okay, I feel pretty good about this. <laughs> Let's see what we've got. Okay. Okay, so it looks great. It's definitely stable, which is awesome. The screws didn't come through the wood, which is great news. <laughs> My one concern is, is it too tall? It's taller than my old coffee table, not by a ton, but it feels kind of tall. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah, that's way too tall. <laughs> so in an interesting turn of events, this is about six inches too tall. I don't know why my brain didn't like recognize that before now. The plus side is proof of concept is there. It looks really cool. This is like planter height, I feel like. Like if I was using this for something else, this would be an, an okay height for it to be. <laughs> okay, we need to regroup. I'll be back. <laughs> so it's the next day. Now that I have gotten past um, the crisis, like problem solving stage of where am I going to get the correct sized legs in a short period of time. Now that we're through that stage, I can laugh about how hilarious it is that I didn't realize how freaking tall this was. <laughs> so basically what happened is the legs on the Lowe's website were marked in the wrong bin because I double checked. I went back and double checked that I went to the right bin. Aisle 48, Bay 8, that's where I got them from. And they were supposed to be six inch legs. These are 16 inch legs. <laughs> so this is 10 inches taller than it should be. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, I was sending pictures to my friends yesterday, like cracking up, and they were all saying that it looks like one of Delia Dietz's sculptures getting ready to like gallop away. <laughs> but I was able to get the right size legs on Amazon. They should be delivered at some point today. So I'm going to pop these ones off <laughs> as great as they look, take these back to Lowe's, and then we'll reconvene as soon as the new legs get here. This piece is the beginning of a living room makeover for me, and I am so excited to finally be turning this space into something that looks like I live here. Uh, we've kind of joked a lot that our house looks like a rental because we moved our apartment furniture into this house, and it just doesn't really fit and doesn't really uh, reflect our current style. So I'm very excited. I found this Bride of Frankenstein art not too long ago that I had never seen before, and I'm really hoping to build a living room around around this image and color palette, something dark and moody and maximalist. I'm really looking forward to starting that. And I think this piece is a great place to start. These legs came with the hardware. So I just keep thinking about how like funny it is that I'm going to return these and whoever buys these next is going to have screws that were in a coffin. All right, away we go. Hello again. <laughs> so Amazon did not deliver um, my legs yesterday, but they are here now and we've got our two different sizes. So let's take a look at these again. These are the four inch. Those seem really, really teeny tiny. I feel like those are gonna be too small. 
I got them though because those other ones were so crazy long. I was worried about them being too long. Oh. These are like angled. Is that gonna work? I mean, I guess, I guess so. Okay, so I'm looking at my coffee table over here and these legs look really similar in height to those. And the coffin is a similar thickness to my current coffee table because it's one of those ones that's like hollowed out. Um, so I think these are gonna be a good size. Oh, hi, Roscoe. Hi. Do you want to help with the coffin? Hi. Can you say hello? Say hello. Oh, such a good dog. He's such a good dog. Bless you. Okay. So we're going to try this again. <laughs> Once more with feeling. Perfect. So this is now a similar, almost identical height to my current coffee table. All my furniture is sort of mid-century inspired, so everything sits pretty low. So uh, it was important for this to sit at a, a lower height. Plus now this sits at a 16 inch height, which is pretty standard for a coffee table. So this feels really stable and like it's not going to be easily tippable. Um, my husband was really worried about it being easily off kilter, but I don't think that we're going to have that problem. So I am happy with that. Once again, no screws through the wood, which is exciting. So now we just need to take a look at the top here. Okay, so in looking at this for the hinges, I think it will face this way with this part that I'm sitting in front of being towards the couch. So we'll likely want it to open towards us, meaning the hinges will need to go on this side. I think this larger hinge that's kind of made to bear a bit more weight is probably the one we're gonna wanna go with. Honestly, I'm wondering if I'm gonna need two of these rather than just the one. Let's take a look here. If this will even work. Oh, actually, that's gonna be too long because of the ledge on this. All right then, let's take a look at this bigger piece. Uh, my brain stopped functioning, hold on. <laughs> okay, so I've been fidgeting with hinge stuff for a minute and I realized I bought this for a reason and it's because I was like I feel like that's what coffin hinges look like and now that I'm realizing why the other hinge doesn't work that is what coffin hinges look like the meat of them is on the outside of the coffin um, and I don't dislike the way this black metal looks because it matches the legs so while this may not be the aesthetic choice that some people would make, I am going to add two of these like this and we can move past this stage and it will actually open because we are getting to a place where it wasn't going to open. And it's really important to me that it does because I think that's what makes it cool. So let's work on these now. I finally did it. <laughs> I'm so thrilled. I really like actually the way this looks and now it can open and close, which is so cool. I can just see the title of this video now. Midge breaks 150 year old coffin. Turn it like this so you can see. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I just really like having the option for us to store blankets in here or even like seasonal decor to switch out for the top of the table, different candles and things like that that I have kind of around we could stick in there to change out I think that would be really nice it's just always nice to have options of places to put things <laughs> plus I just think it's cool to keep it functional in that way it adds to the conversation piece aspect of it I think I'm really thrilled with how this is all coming together I think the last thing I want to do is just take some wood polish to it and kind of clean it up as I showed you towards the beginning, there is a pretty large chip on this side, which I would love to at least maybe take some stain to, just to make it the same color as the wood so it doesn't quite stick out like that. 
but I'm just gonna give this a good polish and then switch it out for my current coffee table and I will show you the finished product when it's all in place. I'll see you in just a second. So there you have it. This is my new coffin table. I'm really thrilled with how this came out. I think it's so beautiful. Definitely a conversation piece. I will say at the moment, it's a little bit small for the furniture that I have going in here just kind of lengthwise, our other sofa is quite a ways over there. But as I mentioned in this video, this is the beginning of a refurbish of this room to make it cozy and more authentic to our style. I think this is a great starting point and I can't wait to show you all the rest of the transformation, which will hopefully be coming to the channel uh, very soon. As always, thank you all so much for watching. If you are new here and would like to see more weird projects from me, be sure to subscribe to the channel before you leave today. And for additional content from me and monthly live videos, you can check out my Patreon in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, keep it campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Bye.